Now, I want to start today's program by saying this is not primarily a story that we cover because it is about the trans issue. Um, this is an, a story we cover because it is about freedom of speech. And as you would know, we believe in freedom of speech on the platform. It is what, and it's in our very DNA, it's what we're all about. Um, and our recent coverage, for example, of the obnoxious and hateful poem that Tusiata Avia wrote and was then performed at a publicly funded art festival, we approached that not wanting to cancel Tusiata, but to ask questions about where the limits of free speech were. And, you know, wasn't it great? Ming Foon came on and Ming Foon told us that the bar for inciting hateful speech and that is very, very high in this country. So I'm going to start the program by making a prediction that with the bar set so high by the Human Rights Commission and by the Race Relations Conciliator, there is absolutely no way that the government or immigration can stop Posey Parker coming here unless they're complete and utter woke hypocrites. So let's see. I'm also going to say this. Most of us, well, half of us for a start, and most women are not faced with the possibility of a fella in a dress or pretending to be a woman walking into a public toilet we're in and flopping out their gear and doing some other stuff with their gear. The vast majority of women in New Zealand live in communities and places where this is highly unlikely to happen to them. The vast majority of women in New Zealand are unli unlikely to be incarcerated in a prison where a man says he's a woman and goes to a woman's prison and then might assault or be creepy with the women inmates. It is also, though more likely, though not probable, that if uh, your son or daughter or you are participating in a sporting event that re relies on physical prowess, muscle mass, bone density, that you're going to have some bloke who just wants to win and says he's a Sheila turning up and raining heavily on your parade. But those issues are important to some people. And those issues upset in particular a certain group of women who are feminists. Some would say radical feminists, that's a judgment call I'm not going to make. And if those issues, which are real, not abstract, though not commonplace, and if those issues are issues for some people in this country or indeed around the world, they have a right, because of freedom of speech, to say they are issues. They have a right to argue the point. Indeed, as others have a right to argue back against them. So everything we're going to do in the program today is based on that premise. And I know that most of you are getting up or going about your business, getting the kids to school, opening up your business, getting ready for work, paying your taxes and getting on with being Kiwis. And I applaud you. And I know you might have better things to do with your time than talk about what might seem like a fringe issue. But your ability to do those things uh, peacefully in an open democracy with freedom of speech is important to all of us and it is important to the platform. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Firstly, an overview. Uh, Kelly J. Keane is not a Nazi. Kelly J. Keane is not an anti-trans activist. Kelly J. Keane is a feminist, a women's rights activist who was concerned about the issues I just told you about. Kelly J. Keane is a British citizen. She has a right to come to New Zealand on her passport without having a visa unless immigration in New Zealand intervenes. If immigration in New Zealand intervenes, it should be on the grounds, it should not be on political grounds. It shouldn't be, by law, because a minister 
simply doesn't like the cut of her jib. So, we have now a group, uh, the Prime Minister even at his press conference yesterday obviously is aware of this. Um, There has been a campaign by radical transgender advocates to have Michael Wood, the Minister of Immigration, intervene in this because those groups don't like the freedom of speech that Posey Parker, also known as Kelly J. Keane, or the other way around, um, is planning to bring to New Zealand. She's planning to come here. She's going to have, or plans to have, a public meeting in Auckland on Saturday and a public meeting in Wellington, I think, Sunday or Monday. Um, and she's had a few in Australia, one of, went, 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 one of which went a bit sideways when some neo-Nazis turned up and kind of hijacked her event. They weren't invited by her. And the, there was some violence when someone stormed the stage she had set up and I think some bouncers moved that person on. Most of the violence was perpetrated by the Victorian police against anti-protesters or counter-protesters who also turned up. So the whole thing was a bit of a dog's beat, really. Um, but there you go. Now, of course, we have the woke mainstream media in New Zealand rounding on Kelly uh, J trying to get her cancelled from New Zealand. And no better example of the crap reporting we've had on this. Oh, by the way, we interviewed her last Friday. We were well aware, ahead of the curve on this. You can still hear that interview uh, on the platform. Particularly, you can go back and get it um, on my show replay if you are a Platform Plus member, which is well worth it. All right. Lead story last night. This story, while the rest of us are figuring out how to pay the mortgage and the higher interest rates and whether or not teachers are going to get more money and how we're going to recover from the cyclone. The lead story last night, some, some genius at TVNZ decided this was going to be their lead story on the taxpayer-funded TV channel. And it began with Sam the Eagle, old uh, Simon Shallot Dallow, began like this. An anti-transgender rights speaker may be denied... Oh, let's do that again, Ben. Can we do that again? Because we missed the top. You just didn't have it faded up, did you? This is our technology. Yeah, yeah, go for it again. Good evening. An anti-transgender rights speaker may be denied entry into New Zealand after a group used Nazi salute. Stop it there, yeah, an anti-transgender activist. Okay, so there's the very start. The very start of this story begins with a mis... um, uh, uh, basically mislabelling... Kelly J, an anti-transgender activist. No, no, she's a woman's rights activist. She says that, and all the demonstrable evidence says that. Who says she's an anti-trans rights activist? The trans lobby. The small, tiny, but highly vocal trans lobby. So, from the very get-go, Simon Shallow was telling you a lie. And the story goes on. Includes at an event in Melbourne over the weekend. And a warning, our story tonight includes that footage. Immigration New Zealand is now reviewing whether Kelly J. Keane Minchell, also known as Posey Parker, will be allowed to cross the Tasman for two planned events in Auckland and Wellington this weekend. Kushta Norman reports. Behind police lines, protesters performed the Nazi salute on the steps of Parliament House in Melbourne. They'd gathered to support British anti Yeah, no, so they performed, well, the Nazi salute. Yes, they did. They hadn't gathered to support Posey Parker. They'd gathered to hijack her event. All right? And by the way, Simon, Posey Parker's going to be able to cross the Tasman, I think, but she might get turned away at customs here. All right, so that's wrong too. But So we start the whole story. We've mislabeled her. And now we have completely misrepresented what happened at Melbourne. TVNZ, by the way, did not have a reporter there. Trans activist Kelly Jean Keane Minchell, also known as Posey Parker, who is the founder of the group Standing for Women. She's been touring Australia and was due here this week, but now Immigration New Zealand is reviewing that. I don't want to interfere in in that, Um, but 
My, I guess my message is anybody ex exercising their right to free speech, whatever the circumstances are, should be mindful that, you know, we don't want to incite hateful behaviour or, um, uh, or violence. In fact, it's illegal to do so. Um, and I think everybody should bear that in mind. Clash is also so the Prime Minister's into it. Someone decided to ask the Prime Minister at his post-cabinet press conference yesterday, and isn't it good for him to say, of course it's illegal to incite violence, but we know where the bar is set on that, don't we, TVNZ? Though you didn't cover the Tusiata Avia issue or talk to Ming Foon about it, so you've got no context in this story for the grab that you get out of the Prime Minister. But nice to know the Prime Minister says um, inciting to violence is bad. I think we all agree with that. But funny also that the Prime Minister didn't mention that Meng Foon has set the bar for doing that through the Tusiata Avia affair, which was publicly funded hate speech. He set the bar incredibly, incredibly high. But that's a context TVNZ couldn't be bothered with. The story goes on. Also broke out at the event in Melbourne on Saturday between supporters of Parker and those rallying in favour of trans rights. It's quite stressful, uh, especially worrying with the stuff happening in Melbourne with the neo-Nazis. That's actually quite terrifying. I do think. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that was the woman with the glasses, Ben. Yes, that 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 woman who they're quoting is some sort of expert on this, or they decide to get this woman. Caitlin Spice's views on this TVNZ. Caitlin Spice is a stalker. Caitlin Spice has restraining orders against her for stalking people who advocate for women's rights. There was no explanation of who Caitlin Spice was or why they decided to put Caitlin Spice in a news article or what organisation Caitlin Spice is involved in. But I can tell you, Caitlin Spice is a stalker and she has restraining orders against her from stalking people that she disagrees with. TVNZ never bothered explaining that to you. And the story goes on. I think there's pretty serious grounds in public safety to bar the entry of Posey Parker to Aotearoa. As a Brit, Posey Parker can enter New Zealand without applying for a visa, but New Zealand officials can turn her away at the border. I imagine there'll be a lot of factors that the minister would take into account, but uh, this weekend's events in Melbourne would probably mean that the minister would have to take that risk. That's just some lawyer they found, some woke lawyer, who seems to be going off events in Melbourne from what she's read on social media. And of course, because she's talking to TVNZ, she's going to tell them what they want to know, and that is that the minister should probably take the risk and suppress free speech uh, in New Zealand. So I don't know what she was doing there exactly, that lawyer, and it seemed to me she was talking through a hole in her bottom. The story goes on. Very seriously. Wellington's mayor is not happy about her possible arrival. Uh, as a council, um, we're very, quite, we're, we're quite protective about our rainbow community. We're yeah, that's Tori Farnow, the Green Party mayor of New Zealand. Um, you might, as a council, be protective of your rainbow community, Tori Farnow. I note you don't never come on this program. You haven't cleaned up the streets of Wellington from the human flotsam and jetsam and our water pipes are still uh, busting out all over the place. But, oh, she can take time out from her busy schedule, Tori Farnow, to say our council, our, our council is very protective of our rainbow community. I tell you what, why not be protective, Tori Farnow, the Mayor of Woke, why not be protective of your community's freedom of speech? And the idea that we can have open de debate in a functioning democracy. Why was Tory Farnow hauled out? Why suddenly the Mayor of Wellington? Why not Wayne Brown? Because Tory Farnow was going to tell Television New Zealand what they wanted to hear. And because the group leading the charge, on that, that male voice earlier was Ricardo Mendez Menenchen, some Mexican guy who got on, on the Green Party list, and shuttled back and forth during COVID with the help of the, of the Labor government. Um, so the Greens are all over this. This is basically a Green Party woke political campaign. So of course, Tory Farno had to front. Tory, I'll tell you what, sister, as a Wellingtonian, I'm way more concerned about my freedom of speech than the imaginary woke pill clutching that you are involved in. Ben, let's have more.
We understand there might be a counter protest um, being organised, and that's something that would certainly support. The worry is. Oh, stop there. So, protest bad. We don't want any problem in the speech. But literally, my council in Wellington is going to take sides on this issue. We would support a counter protest, the sort of counter protest that is likely to lead to violent confrontation and require the police to intervene. So this is it, Tory. You're either you're either part of the revolution and you're out there on the barricades or you're a publicly elected bloody official as the mayor of Wellington. So second strike for Tory Farnow. That we might start moving backwards, like we're seeing in other countries, like the US. Um, the UK is just a full of transphobia. Um, Ugly scenes. And that—that that is Caitlin Spice, the person with the um, restraining order again. I don't know why she's there, just because she supports the TV and Z woke narrative. Like these, no one wants to see repeated here. Kushla Norman, One News. And there you go. That's it. What wasn't in that story? What wasn't in that story was any attempt to contact Posey Parker, to contact Kelly J, just completely and utterly absent. Uh, what wasn't in that story, any investigation of who the neo-Nazis who turned up in Melbourne were and whether or not they were aligned with Kelly J Keane. What also wasn't in that story, any comment from the Free Speech Union, from Jonathan Ayling, who is joining us later on the program, who defined this issue as an issue of free speech. So no balance. Bad language in terms of the wrong language, mislabelling people. No balance, no context. It was a piece of state-funded propaganda. And the thing is, that is the lead story on the most watched news bulletin in this country. So do we have freedom of speech, folks? Do we have a fair, impartial and unbalanced media? Even old Granny Herald has changed its reporting of this because it recognised that it mislabeled Kelly J as an anti-trans activist. Uh, also, what didn't TVNZ have? It didn't have Ming Foon or the Human Rights Commissioner explaining the incredible high bar for, for hate speech that exists in this country. So that was a hit job. That was a hit job on a women's rights activist uh, sponsored by the, the state, fundamentally. Um, so I think we are in trouble with that. Um, and I think if you watch that, and I got many, many messages from people. So I want to make these observations. TVNZ, uh, I'm not telling you to do this. I would say that is a piece of reportage so grossly bad that the broadcast, even the woke broadcasting standards authority would have to uphold, if you, if you worded it rightly, a complaint against that. That's all I'm saying. Not my job. Not my job. All I'm saying is that on the grounds of balance, fairness and accuracy fails at every hurdle and TVNZ... If you chose to go to the BSA, I think the outcome would be very, very interesting. I wonder if they will change their coverage today. I wonder if they're rainbow tick approved. Can we check whether or not TVNZ are rainbow tick approved? I'm getting the feeling they are. In general coverage on this, and I've got to say, a little hat tip to um, News Hub, who are not part of MediaWorks. Uh, News Hub... <laughs> Did a story that was still bent, but way less bent than that one. They look good in comparison, so a wee hat tip to them. If you want the truth about this story, the fact is you're probably going to have to listen to the platform. Or listen to everyone and make your own bloody mind up. Um, so there you go. That's my rip. My rip on TVNZ. Um and how can we have... And the problem is that the Prime Minister and the Minister of Immigration are going to base their decision whether or not to ban, to exclude um, Kelly J from this country on crap reportage like that. And we'll hear from Avi Yemeni um, from Rebel News, who has actually spoken directly to Kelly J about this. We might have her on tomorrow. Uh, she's travelling in Australia, so she's hard to get hold of. We're certainly hoping to talk to her when she comes here, if she comes here. Um, and also, I want to ask you this question, if you can text in to me. Do you think 
Kelly J Keane is a greater risk to you know the peaceful peaceful our peaceful life in New Zealand than Tusiata Avia. What's more like hate speech? Her saying keep your penis out of the women's toilets or um, go around in cars with a knife trying to stab white people. I don't know. It's a bit of a line call, isn't it? Let's have a quick break. Oh, yeah, it counts. What you have to say counts if you're allowed to say it. And that depends whether the woke are running this country or the sensible are running this country. Uh, TVNZ, not Rainbow Tick certified, just intrinsically culturally woke because it's run for and paid and funded by the government. Um, NZME, which is ZB and the Herald and everything, yeah, they're Rainbow Tick, so they won't cover the story properly. And Media Works is Rainbow Ticked up the wazo. In fact, I found out that their head of HR is part of, is a huge Rainbow Tick advocate and that some of the stuff that went on with those Today FM hosts was pretty appalling and amounted to bullying. Um, I note that the head of Today FM, their producer's gone. Dallas Guinea, hope you're all right, mate. And I wonder how much discussion on this issue or how much balanced discussion on this issue you're going to get out of MediaWorks. You know? How, how much are you going to get out of... Uh, the talkback people on yesterday, FM. All right, I've got a whole lot of text and the lines are open, 0800 332283. I want to know what you think about this issue. I want to know if you think you're getting the right, um, the right facts on it and let's go, through, um, let's go through all the texts we've got on this. Um, Sean, people focus on the original, more insidious version in the story of of the story instead of the correction issued. There's an aspect to stories like these that seem 100% deliberate. You know how it goes, don't bite the hand that feeds you, says Simon. Sean, I don't think it would be inappropriate for you to remind platform listeners of the publi publicly accessible email address of the Minister of Immigration and Wellington's Mayor, says Jeff. I don't think it would be either, we'll do that later in the programme. Sean, if they turn Posey Parker away at the border, we can officially say that New Zealand is run by a fascist government behaving like dancing bears to the green grifters. Chris Hipkins, we are watching you. Free speech is free speech. Nothing worse than men not allowing women to speak. And worse still are other women who support them. As a real woman, this disgusts me. Those Nazis in Australia were clearly Antifa. Oh, I don't know that they were. And probably put there by the trans activist... Cheers, Kate. P.S. That Caitlin Spice has a very deep voice. Well, he does, doesn't he? Um, Sean, the difference is black and white, night and day, in the context of Posey and Tusiata. What, what's, it's a piece of artwork. Oh, okay. Maybe Posey should just say, I'm an artist. I'm a performance artist. And she'd get away with it. Sean, speaking of rainbow tick crap... Oh, are there rainbow decal police cars? Well, as long as they're easier to spot when I'm speeding, I don't care. Sean, Tori Farno is too busy posing for Insta photos, recent birthday party with her rainbow posse party boys Wellington getting drunk and doing lines on the bathroom to be running a city. It is unbelievable that she is the mayor. First-hand info, says Anonymous. Sean, the fact Caitlin Spice is a trans-identifying male who regularly abuses turf or turfs online. Yes, she is, actually, and I don't know what she was doing in the TVNZ story. Um, the Prime Minister said hateful behaviour or violence, Freudian slip. Um, Sean, I believe you should release the interview as a teaser to get these BS people can hear what Kelly J has to speak. Phil, it is on the platform, and I retweeted uh, a teaser for it last night. Uh, Simon Shallow, brilliant, Sean. Well, he just reads. He's just an auto -Q reader, Simon. He just reads what's put in front of him like old Peter Williams. They're just clutch cargoes. Um, Sean, whether she comes or not, I love this from Simon. I'm still playing golf on Sunday. And the fact is most of us will get on with our lives. Um, 
Sean, RNZ is insinuating this morning that Posey Parker is aligned with neo-Nazis, a disingenuous and defamatory suspension of RNZ's cricket critical faculties. Yeah, uh, she's actually talked to Avi Yemeni, which is why I'm talking to Avi. She said, you say that about me, I'm going to sue you for defamation. And that's what the law's there for. Um, um, <laughs> yes, he is. I like that text that you didn't want me to read out. Look, it just makes me laugh. Totally agree, Reposy Parker letter in, says John. So there we go. Look, we're going to have a big talk about this this morning. I hope you've got across, I hope I've explained the issue to you. Um, and I will be asking for your feedback and for you to ring in and talk about this um, all through the morning. Um, Chris Bishop from the National Party is up yet. The poor old Nats reeling from a very vicious speech by James Shaw and the Green Party who have gone all feral ahead of the election.